Alright guys, so today what I'm showing you is how I installed my HackRF port pack case. So, as my previous video mentioned, uh, there were some issues. I ordered this case because of course I wanted this beautiful Mayhem screen printed um, port pack to be able to see through, so I looked for a clear case. Uh, a 3.2 inch screen is what it was described as, port pack uh, Didn't give any more details. Uh, the actual company that was selling them didn't have additional details, so I ended up ordering it. Turned out these little fins here, I ended up having to actually grind off some of these because they put an extreme amount of pressure on each side of the screen. And in fact, while trying to fit it, cracked my screen so this video is hopefully going to help someone prevent cracking their screen um, first thing you do uh, to put the porta pack together with the actual case is you can put it together but you have these little separators here so if you can see through on each corner there's a little uh, rod that is screwed in so what you'll do is you'll fit your hacker up and porta pack together slip those little separators on each corner and then what you're going to do is just start the screws on the underside here and that will get it secured and the separators will be there and in place at that point and then uh, what you will need to do is first ensure that these fins here on the side are not putting pressure on your screen so as you can see on the side of the porta pack there's no protection it's just plain glass so pressure is very dangerous so you want to ensure number one that you give your screen pr plenty of room and what i did after finding out the hard way, to be honest, I was in a little bit of a rush. I had waited so many weeks for this case that I really wanted to get it to work, but I sort of underestimated the amount of pressure on the glass. So always remember, anytime you're dealing with screens, make sure you leave plenty of room for the screen. That ended up breaking the touch function of my screen, but the buttons still work. You know, obviously it is very saddening to have a HackRF porta pack that no longer works with the touchscreen. I mean, the touchscreen wasn't, you know, super sensitive or anything, but it still was nice to have it working. Now, when I actually press it, it will actually do some other things. But this topic is actually for the actual HackRF case, so let's continue on with that before I get sidetracked. So to put the top part on of this clear case, the first thing you need to ensure you do is place the headphone jack through the hole. Because see, if you don't do that, uh, you could end up pushing down on the headphone jack and then you could damage it that way. So you wanna ensure first thing is on the bottom, when you put that in, you first have to pull this through. So you're gonna slip it in through this way, this side first to get, let the buttons go out the holes, and then also to let the SMA port come out that hole. And then at that point, you'll be able to bring down this side as well. In fact, like there are so many different factories making hacker refs and porta packs that we never know there can be a slight variation. So for people who are making cases and selling cases, you need to ensure you put out instructions and compatibility lists, or you're gonna risk negative reviews from customers. So that is my advice to those who are selling these cases. Make sure you put out plenty of details and which port packs it is fitted to and which ones it is not. Because I actually, and this could be a small defect at the factory for all I know, but I had to grind off around the corner. So as you can see that white area around the corner, I actually had to grind around that corner, just this one, because it stuck out slightly. So it didn't fit inside the bottom part of the case well. So I spent hours on this case getting it to fit. And really my time is more valuable than um, that. So when I spend what, you know, 20 bucks or whatever it was for the case, I don't expect to spend hours working on fitting it. So to anyone who is selling these cases, make sure you're leaving out a compatibility list, a basic set of instruction, and you will not run into 
customers who are breaking their screen. Um, really important. So what I had to do was I grinded part of my bottom of my hacker rough to fit it in. And hopefully you'll get a case that fits yours and is made for it. My case was a little different and had some extra plastic. So this was very sharp. These fins were very tight. And what I actually did was I grinded away at the inside of it after, you know, actually before it broke my screen. I thought I had taken enough of the plastic off, but apparently it was still tight. And there are slight variations in screens as well, so you have to watch out for that. So even if it says it's compatible with your porta pack uh, keep in mind that there are so many different manufacturers making porta packs and hacker refs that a slight difference in the screen or the actual board could make a huge difference. And if you're trying to sell cases, you better make sure that they're going to fit because otherwise you're risking a lot of bad reviews. So that is the reason for this video to show how I got mine in, how you can install your porta pack inside a actual case. Um, but what I do recommend is if you can do it, buy it all in one kit, save yourself the trouble and save yourself from making the same screen break mistake that I had made. So I hope this video does help you. And after you end up getting it all in place, if you have to grind away part of the case, go for it. Do what you got to do. Don't take a risk with your screen. And at this point, I have the fins like barely have enough room, but they have enough room. And then I kind of pull it over the corner here and there it is, it's fastened now. And at this point, all I need to do is screw in my screws. So I've got my screws over here. First though, before you ever put it in the case, remove the button, remove these little buttons as well. So make sure to do that, otherwise you may end up breaking something. So remember, be very careful Make sure it's fitted to your model and the manufacturer who made your model since there are so many variations. And once all is said and done and you have shaved off any of the excess plastic or steel that was getting in the way or aluminum, um, then you can fasten it down. And after that, you can begin to put the top screws in. And doing that, we can simply screw it in and we'll have our working case. Simple as that. Not very simple, is it? <laughs> uh, anyhow, at least it works, right? At least it has some functionality, but you know, I am very saddened that my touchscreen is broken and now I have a tiny little piece of glass sitting there. So really bummed me out, but I hope this video helps anyone else who is trying to install a HackRF Porta Pack in a case. That's what I got today, guys. Make sure to share the video to help other people not make the same mistake of buying a case that didn't have reviews and also didn't have an actual list of which Porta Pack factories and HackRF factories that it fitted to. Did match the screen size 3.2 inches and that is exactly what mine is. But apparently the variation was just enough to put too much pressure on the side of the screen. That's what I got today, guys. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check out the blog at bmc.link slash politictech and also now on I2P at http colon slash slash right to privacy dot I2P. Make sure to share the video to help others and I will be back later with more on the HackRF, how to protect your security and privacy.